Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education. And today, we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSA Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 25, Questions 77 to 78. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at rates of reaction. So we're told what a uh, rate of a chemical reaction is. We've been given the equation. Um, we're told that the reactions can only be found experimentally, which is why in question 77, they give you a nice um, summary of data collected from a reaction. Um, we're also told that um, you can calculate the time uh, of a reaction in second order um, if you're obviously provided with the uh, concentration at that specific time and uh, the concentration at time zero with the rate if it's if the rate's provided as well. So that's for question 78. But before we dive into question 77, I think it's important we understand what the rate of reaction actually means. So just to, just some points that we should consider before we move on. Um, think about it logically. If we're told that the rate of reaction uh, doubles or the rate and concentration of reactant double, then this change is just represented by an equal factor of one. So let's think about it logically. So let's say our concentration of A doubles and our reaction rate, or let's say it doubles as well. That means if we want to get this number two, what is the factor up here that we have to times it by to get two? So that means we have to do two by a factor of one. So there you have, that's a nice way of showing that if the reaction, uh, if both the rate and the concentration double, it's the same factor. So it's going up by a factor of one. So if we take a look then at the other side, so if the concentration of a reactant doubles, but the rate quadruples, so we can write it as, so let's say A doubles, but the rate quadruples, we're looking for what the factor is here. So obviously the factor is going to be 2. So 2 to the power of 2 is going to equal 4. So therefore we can represent this as, so that can be 1 and that can be 2. So by the factor. So that's, so what we can see here is that the uh, the change can be represented by a factor of 2 since the rate is twice the reactant concentration. So it's quadrupled. So that's what we can say. So if we move into question 78, it says here, so let me just clear the screen. So we've been provided the data and we've been given experiment number 1, 2, and 3, and we have to figure out what the rate law is for this reaction. So if we take a look at experiment 1, we just see experiment 1, we've got the concentration of X and Y, and we have a, 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 our initial rate. So in experiment two, we're doubling y, and what we see is that we're doubling our initial rate. So we can represent that as, so y, so we've doubled it, and our rate has been doubled, which means our y is going to be by a factor of one. So remember that, so our y is going to be by a factor of one. So if we take a look at equation three, or experiment number three, we have our concentration of x, which is doubled, our y is staying the same, but we see that our initial rate quadruples. So if we draw it, x, so let's say we're doubling x, and our rate is quadrupling. Now remember what we said in the intro, we have to look for the factor, so two by two equals four. So that means x, is by a factor of two. So we can see that Y is a first order reaction, X is a second order reaction, so let's combine them together now. So rate equals our uh, constant, so times our second order X and our first order Y. So if we actually combine all of these together, if they asked you in the exam, what order reaction is the overall order, it's actually overall a three order reaction overall. So that's if you combine all of them together, but that's not what it's asking. So the answer therefore for question 78 has to be, oh sorry, question 77, jump the gun here. Question 77 has to be D. So if we move over now to question 78, We've been told it's a second order reaction. 
which means we can reuse the second equation provided to us in the uh, stimulus. So we, we can write down our known values. So let's just write down our known and unknown. So it looks like here we're trying to find the time. So the time taken, so that's our unknown, but let's write down unknowns. So what is our QT value? So QT, so that's going to be our concentration of our compound at this specific time, is going to equal, it tells us in the stimulus, it is 0 0.05 molar. What about our K value? So it's there explicitly, our K value is going to be, so it says 4 by 10 to the minus 1. We can just write that easily as 0 0.4 uh, per molar per min. And our Q0, so our concentration at time 0, is going to equal 0 0.1. So please leave the units, and I want to show you why it's important we leave the units. Because I know it might not be important for this um, topic, but I harp on about this all the time. Because in other games that question, they might not be nice, and you have to derive the units yourself. So let's just, if you're practicing, let's just do it from first principles and do it from the foundation. So let's get our whiteboard out. Now that we have our knowns and our unknown is time, we can substitute all of these values into the equation and then we can find our answer for time. So if we just uh, clear the screen here and um, go to our whiteboard, if I just remove ghost mode. So what we do is let's substitute our values. So we're going to substitute um, 1 over, so we've got 1 over 0 0.05 molar equals, so we've got 0 0.4, so remember it's going to be per molar per min times our T, plus 1 over our Q0, which is our 0 0.1 molar. So there's many ways we can solve this equation. But um, I think I, I'm going to do it this way, but you can do it another way. But the way I did it was just 1 over 0 0.05. So bring this across, minus 1 over 0 0.1 equals 0 0.4 molar min time. So um, you probably noticed here that uh, zero, so 0 0.1 is twice 0 0.05, so we can just times this by 2, times this by 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so we know it's 1 over 0 0.1 molar, and we know that's the same as 10 molar. So 10 molar equals, so 0 0.4 over molar min t. So what we can do is we can just divide this side by 0, so we want to find out time. Divide this side by 0 0.4 molar min. So that means this will cross out, this will cross out. Min will come across. So it's going to be, so 0 0.4 times 10 is 4, times 20 is 8, times 25 is, uh, uh, is 10. So that means what we do here is, so if we do 10 divided by 0 0.4 min, it's going to equal... See, so 0 0.4 goes into 10 25 times. So 25 mins. So that's our T value. So therefore, our answer, if I remove the whiteboard now, so if we get rid of the whiteboard, so we can see that the answer for 78 is going to be C. So I can clear that as well. So if we go back into our ghost mode, <clears throat> So it's C. So if, if you're still finding it hard to conceptualize what's going on here with rate of reaction and uh, the rate law, you can post your comments and your queries in the comment section below, or I guess you can contact us directly. We'd love to help you. Um, chemistry is our bread and butter. Thanks for your time. Bye now.